There were a lot of factions. There were a lot of things going on. And from that moment, everything just subsided. Hallelujah. All over Greece, brethren, other churches and all, they were, at that moment, everything subsided. Praise. Yeah. Our neighbors came to visit me and they couldn't, they said, oh, we love you, pastor, you know, and everybody wanted to be on the same page. All of a sudden, for years, people didn't want to cooperate, but all of a sudden, from that moment on, wow. everybody wanted to cooperate. Hallelujah. I'm saying that to just say, to tell you, you know that happened. You know what's going on here. And so, we have experienced such a wonderful presence of God and peace and everybody growing and being blessed. But now it's time. The Lord says to me, it's time to go back to war. Amen. Not with each other, not with others, but it's time for us to go to war again. Not for ourselves, but for the unborn souls of the harvest upon which our Lord is waiting. Hallelujah. And he calls, says, the fields are white and are ready to harvest. And, and Satan knows this as well. Yes, he does. And so he is attempting to distract. Distract us from the business or God's business at hand. One of the famous quotes that Jesus said, he said, I must be about my Father's business. I'm talking about it's time for us to unify and harmonize about the business at hand. And that business at hand is reaching out to the lost souls that are all around us. Souls are dying. Men are crying. Reach out, touch, and win yes. the lost. Yes. Praise God. And God is our witness, and God is He who is behind what we are doing. Amen. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. For the power that is behind us is greater than the task that is before us. Hallelujah! You'll open your Bibles and read with me from Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. The title of my message today is Revisiting the Beginning. Jesus, speak to us today. We're thankful, God, for the rejoicing that you sent our way today. We're thankful for all the leaders and elders, the saints of God, all the directors, all those that participate in the many ministries of this church. We thank you, Lord, for the healing power, God, that you demonstrated here already today. God, I pray now, Lord, please, speak through me. God, hide me behind your cross once again. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, if there's anything that's unlike thee inside of me, I pray, God, that you would remove it out of my life. I yes, Lord. So that you can shine through. Yes, Lord. And that these words Word. will not be Word. Brother Strickland's words. Hallelujah. But they will be your words. Hallelujah. They will become heavenly manna. Hallelujah. They will become words of spirit and life to this people. Talk to us, God, of what your will is and what your purpose is this hour. 
In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. 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 I would like to draw your attention to this, this one verse. If there's any verse or any chapter in the Bible that describes the apostolic church, and this church is apostolic, is Acts chapter 2. And the first verse sets the scene. It tells us so many things. So often we jump over to verse 4, verse 8, verse 38. And we don't even read the first verse so much. But today I want to you to focus in on this first verse. It says in this verse, it says, They were all with one accord in one place. Now, I believe we have a whole lot of unity. And we can have unity but not be in one accord. And I mean we have a unity in that I love you, you love me, I've got no, you're not offended at me, I'm not offended at you, we love everybody, I'm going to go eat at your house, you come eat at my house. And everybody loves everybody. We have unity in that sense. But I don't think we have the one accord that we're talking about. The one accord. And I think the Greek word is so descriptive and so full of expression. It signifies in the word omo themadon. Hallelujah. Omo themadon. And basically omo means same. Odon means the way forward or the road. Thema is the scopo or the purpose or the theme that we go by. Amen. It means everybody yes. going in the same direction Hallelujah. with the same purpose. Hallelujah. And that's what we need today. And I'm going to preach about this today. I'm going to talk to you about this. I want to drive this home to you today. This is not a shouting message necessarily. I don't know how God's going to take this. But this is education. This is something that you've got to get in your, through your mind, through your thoughts, and get down into the inner part of your soul, into your heart, and let it become a part of you. <clears throat> All your mind. With all their minds. Of course we know what the scripture says that we should serve the Lord with all of our soul, mind, and strength. But I think I can describe us today is we're kind of, uh, <laughs> we, we are, the Greek word is emio. <laughs> we're kind of half, half, misa, misa. But much of us are, 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 we are scattered in our thoughts. We are scattered in our thinking. And I, it's not a, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But if we want what I believe God wants to see and God wants to perform in our midst, and it's what I want to see, we're going to have to do better than just, we've got to get our whole minds on the same thing. Now, we can come in here and I, there's probably 15 or 20 different versions of this service today that some people will take out in here. And you see different things than the person next to you. You came, somebody came for to be healed today. That's a good thing. Some people came, they want to hear a word. Some people came because it was their duty to come. Some people came because they have responsibilities. And so these things are all what many of you are thinking. I want to play my music today. I want to sing. I got my voice has got to be right. So we're thinking all these things. And so when we, when we come together and we begin to worship and we praise, our minds are not the same. Amen. And I'm not saying this, but I'm saying we need to take it to the next level. Yes, Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. We 
are entering into a season of harvest. Souls is the priority from this day forward. I'm not here to seek pretty. I'm not here to make a show. I'm not here to make my flash. I'm not here uh, uh, to get my healing even. These things will fall in their places. But what God wants in this house, souls is number one. Glory! They had all their minds. It said that this one comment it said all their minds, all affections, yes. all affections. Yes. I said we got we've got different affections, but we got to lay our affections aside and bring it into the yes. one, Hallelujah. the one affection. Hallelujah. Amen. If somebody has got to be saved today, Hallelujah. somebody has got to be saved today. We are here primarily for somebody to find Jesus Christ in the power of His resurrection and in the name of the Lord name, Jesus. And being in one accord, almost Themathon, is with all of their minds, with all of their affections, with all of their desires. If I understand what I'm trying to say correctly, if it's all of my desire, yes. if nobody gets the Holy Ghost today, God. I fail. Because my desire to see somebody repent and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Speaking of This is not a message of condemnation. All these things we've talked about are good and right. But we already had that season. Okay? Hallelujah. The summer is gone. Amen. Now we're coming. It's harvest time. It's time to get the kalaboki up at the horafia. It's time, amen, to gather the gold and grain. Hallelujah. For Jesus said, look upon the fields. They are already white. No way. Don't say it now. Three months and four months and come at the harvest. It's already there. And so he's almost theme I found this writer, he says it expresses that all their minds, affections, desires, and their wishes. Hallelujah. And their wishes. You know what I wish? I wish that somebody would get the Holy Ghost today. No more excuses. I wish somebody would get so hungry for God that they quit acting that part. And they would just come down here and plead with God. God, I need the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I said, God, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I worship you. I love you. And bam. They begin to speak in other tongues. As God witnesses that they just received his spirit. They were concentrated. They were centered upon one object that day. Hallelujah. And they were all in one place in one accord. One place. In one place. They were centered upon one object that day. One place. That's that's what we have to do. They, they didn't have many objectives that day. There was only one object that was on their mind. Hallelujah. And that was the promise of the Father. Glory to God. Now I'm asking Crossroads. I'm asking the membership of this church. If we could maybe lay aside our own wishes, yes. whims, desires. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm asking for a sacrifice. That you don't pray for a job. 
as earnestly as you pray for a lost soul. I pray it. That your ambition that you're praying for, that you just move it to the back for a while and put a lost soul first in your prayer and in your desires and your wishes and in your mind. Every man had the same view in mind. Jesus said, I will send the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And they were all there. They weren't looking ahead with what's going to happen 10 years down the road. Am I going to be the number one apostle? What's my name going to be? What job am I? They, none of that was there that day. In those days when they were there, there's only one object that was on their mind. Jesus yes. said, go and tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Glory. And this was called the promise of the Father. Because yes. God was going to send them the comforter, the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so there for days, about a well, when the, when the Holy Ghost finally fell upon them, there were about 120 of them still there. Just about, well, a few more here than, than 120 today, but, but, but a crowd almost like this. Yes. They stayed there for seven days, seven days. night and day, yes, God. with one object in mind. With one purpose in mind. One goal in mind. And that was for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This was the first action that God did in the church. He baptized everyone with the Holy Ghost. Evidenced by speaking with other tongues. Now if you're here today and you... Say I have the Holy Ghost, but you have never spoken other tongues. I, I differ with you. Unless you have spoken in tongues, you have not received the gift of the Holy. You were blessed. Amen. You were blessed, but blessing is not the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues as God's Spirit will cause it to happen in you. And every man had the same in view and everyone had the same desire and they had but one prayer to God. Praise God. And every heart was speaking the same prayer. Baptize me, Lord. Send down the power. Give me that power you talk. Give me that Holy Ghost. Give me that confidence. Yeah. Yeah. They're all praying for that one thing, the Holy Ghost. And as I said, though we have we have a unity, but we don't have a one accord. And I thank God for the unity. It's been wonderful. But it's time for us to make that little extra sacrifice. And put everything else aside and say, God, I'm focusing on winning souls. My first prayer out of my mouth is going to be God save the lost. Yes, sir. God save Costas. Yes, God sir. save Judy. God save whoever it is that you yes. know. Hallelujah. Save Call their name before God and say that is my priority. That is our priority from now until God opens the windows of heaven and people begin to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God is capable of baptizing hundreds and thousands all at the same time. Hallelujah. I'll be, I'm glad for the one, but I want to see a dozen, two dozen, 15, 20, 50 receiving the Holy Ghost on one weekend at Crossroads. If 
we can get in one accord yes, sir. and bind ourselves together for that reason and that effort alone. Hallelujah. I trust God. I trust God. God can do things beyond our thinking, beyond our imagination. As I preached a few weeks ago, God is able to make us a thousand times more than what we are. Hallelujah. Amen. God can make you much more than what you are. Yes, sir. And you say, God, how can it be? I'm just little old me. Yes, well, say, God, take me and use me. Hallelujah. I believe it for lost souls. Yes. And God will use you just like he used the little maiden over yes, in Syria and brought the, the, the general down to Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, there's a prophet in Israel that can heal that leprosy. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And God can use you and God can take you yes. and multiply this church and this in every individual to be used Hallelujah. beyond our capacity. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just had a testimony just the other day. Bus stop is full of people. Yes. And somebody came and picked up, picked out Sister Benu uh -huh. and said. You're a woman of God. Would you pray for me? How, you know, how did that happen? Woo! I all up out. the only one there who's apostolic. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray, that's how God can do it. Yes, that's how yes. God can do it. There was no person that was uninterested. Cool. I think we're those, we need a little help in that department. There was no person that was not interested that day. Yes, sir. Amen. All those that were not interested had already left. Left, gone. And only those that had true and pure interest were still there on that day. And they received the promise. There was nobody there that was unconcerned. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, that doesn't matter to me. No, there was, all those people had already left. It was only those people that had the deepest concern yes. for the kingdom of God and what God had said to do. There was nobody there that was lukewarm. Hallelujah. In the old cinema, there was nobody there that was lukewarm. But everybody there, amen, had their minds, their thoughts, their total being, their desires, and all their wishes concentrated. Hallelujah. Everybody was earnest that day. And what happened? The Spirit of God came down. And He met their united faith and their prayer Praise God. with the baptism Praise of the Holy Ghost. I want you to close your eyes and say, Oh God, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. God, give me a mind of one accord with yes, my brothers and my yes, sisters. <laughs> they were not ignorant of the hour. They knew exactly what they were praying for, the promise of the Father. Amen. And so they were totally and completely united upon one thing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They were not scattered in their purpose or thought. Brothers and sisters, it's time that we also, as Peter said, to gird up the loins of our minds yes, and bring them all unto the captivity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we have for a season one purpose? Can we for one season, every one of us, amen, sacrifice our own ideas and our own ambitions? Glory. And just pray for that one thing. Let that be first and foremost. Can we unite like that? Yes. And be in one accord. Yes, we can. Yes. Amen. When you see your brother or your sister on the street, can yes. you just say to them, Amen, Jesus loves souls. If you meet somebody on the bus, another brother across where you're going or you're coming, the first words out of your mouth is not going to say, be, it's not going to be, hey, Kikanis, it's going to be, 
Jesus loves souls. Jesus loves Hallelujah. Souls. If you're in the marketplaces, and you're in the mall, and, and, and you're, 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 you're walking, I, I walk by and I, I see Sister Vera somewhere. Amen. I'm not going to say, Sister Vera, how are you doing? Did you buy anything? No. God, help my mind to be yeah. fixed. Help my mind to be concentrated. Help my mind to be upon this one thing that I'm asking today. God, let me say, Sister Vera, Jesus loves souls. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And that's what Jesus said. He said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. And when God's people meet in the same spirit, then we may expect every blessing Hallelujah. and every need Amen. to be fulfilled. But we seek first the kingdom of God yes. and His righteousness. Yes. And all these other wishes and desires shall be added. Amen. Seek first the kingdom Hallelujah. of God. What's, what's the kingdom of God? It's people. It's people. The kingdom of God is people. And if we want to grow the kingdom of God, we want to be a citizen of this kingdom of yes, God, sir. then we should have first and foremost on our minds and our hearts the should kingdom. be people. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. I believe we can do this. Yes. I was reading the other day the account of of uh, a famous pilot. His name was Chuck Yeager. He's the first man to break the sound of the barrier. Yes, sir. And uh, it tells about their attempt to go faster than the speed of sound, which was 770 miles per hour with an airplane. Uh -huh. And 770 miles per hour, they call it Mach 1. And so it says when he would get that airplane that the scientists had designed, when he would get to Mach decimal 86, it would start to shake and ramp. And he'd have to back down and slow down and come in for a landing. So they make some adjustments and they get back up there and they he goes again and he would get like decimal 94. But that plane was just shaking and it just looked like it was going to fall apart. He'd have to stop. He couldn't, he couldn't get through that barrier. Without going into a lot of detail, the sound, the reason there was a barrier was that as the plane would go faster and faster, sound waves would be pushing in front of it and they would get more and more and more and more sound waves would get in front of the airplane. It's kind of like a rug, and you push one in the rug, and it starts lumping up, you know, like that. And, and, and you can't move the rug like that. And so it is with the sound waves. The sound waves kept, kept getting pushed forward, pushed forward, and they kept collecting, collecting. And so there was a literal barrier there of sound waves. And if you don't think sound waves are powerful, sound waves can make glasses break. There are sound waves can inhibit many things just because just they are a force. And so finally, they made some more adjustments, made some more adjustments, made some more adjustments on the airplane, figured out how they could stop this thing from shaking and, and uh, falling apart. And finally the day came when... Uh, as we say, he put the pedal to the metal <laughs> and he got up to 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and he began to just have a little vibration, a little vibration, but Jaeger, being courageous that he was, he just pushed and pushed, and finally, he broke through. And when he broke through, there was a big boom, boom. Everybody heard it, amen. But on the other side, all of a sudden, it was as smooth as silk. Hallelujah. Amen. It was Amen. peaceful on the other side. Amen. And <clears throat> brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, we can break through yes. any Amen. kind of a barrier. Yes. We can overcome every situation. Yes. 
I know we've been praying, we've been praying, we've been doing everything we know to do, we've been making tracks, we've been handing out tracks, we've been preaching, we've been doing all, amen, it just seems like there's a barrier, there's a barrier, there's a barrier, amen. But there comes a point when we're going to break the barrier. Hallelujah. And we're going to have, we're going to conquer, we're going to put ourselves, all of us are scientists, okay. And so we're going to pull our resources and we're all going to get behind this one object. We're going to fix this thing until we can break the sound barrier. Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. I shared with those people in prayer last night. In the spirit, I've been asking the Lord for months now. I see that because uh, we have been, God knows, I don't know if I've I prayed more in these last months than I've prayed all my whole life. I know what you mean. And we've got people fasting, people praying, we've got prayer warriors weeping and crying. And uh, I, I know what that is. I know how powerful that is before God. And uh, so I was asking God, why? When I read about Turkey, they're getting. New people getting the Holy Ghost. I read about Croatia and Serbia, new people. I read about France and people. Everybody around us are getting, everybody's having harvest, new souls. We scarcely baptize in one or two here or there. And the brother and sister, you know me, that don't sit well with me. And so I'm asking God, what's going on with us? I know what we're doing. I know our people, how well. I know the church is clean. The church is doing good. Everybody's we're, we're there's no fighting, there's no fussing, there's no praise God, there's a peace, and everybody's praying. Why, why, why? And this is what the Lord shared with me. Now, it, it takes time sometimes to explain some things, but basically, demons are not omnipresent. Demons can't be everywhere at the same time. So they have to travel to go from one place to another place. And uh, it's a whole lesson just to talk about this. I mean, just take my word for it. And so what the Lord shared with me, he says, y'all of this church, the prayer that you have been doing, all these tears and weeping and travailings and all that, you have completely disrupted the network of the spirits. Demonic. He said, they are calling from all over the area, go to Athens, go to Athens, go to Athens, because they're on fire down there, and they're praying, they're disturbing, and what is happening all in this region has been liberated of offensive spiritual forces uh, because they have been sent to fight our prayer warriors. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know how you see that, but that makes me proud of my prayer warriors. Yes, sir. It makes me proud of this church yes, sir. because that's what's happening. Yes, sir. But he let me know. <laughs> Just a little bit yet. Amen. And we're going to break through and it's going to be our turn. Amen. It's going to be our turn. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God has allowed this church to serve the rest of the kingdom for a season. But then it's going to come our turn. Yes. And the best is yet to come. The half has not yes. been told. Amen. Amen. And you say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be a joint and uni a unified action that we are going to make. And the scripture says one shall put a thousand to flight and two shall put ten thousand to flight. When we get united together in a way that God would have us to unite, there is no forces that can stand against us. No power. Devils do not have enough demons anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be able to stop us when we get to that place. And that's the place I am trying to bring the crossroads as a leader. We have to get into that new dimension and that new realm of thought and thinking spiritually. Amen. Sometimes it helps us if we could have a vision of hell. If we knew what hell would be like, yes, sir. we would not want our worst enemy to go there. Yes, God. But hell is going to be an awful place. 
Have you ever looked into a fire, a barbecue pit, a fireplace, and look at the charcoals and the hot and the white flames and all that cooking? Have you ever thought about, oh my, what hell is going to be like? Have you ever thought that? I don't know if you have or not. I do. Maybe something wrong with me. But I get to think, oh God, I don't want to go to hell. God, it's going to be a horrible place to go to hell. I don't want nobody to go to hell. God, I don't want souls to burn forever and ever in a place like that. I remember a story being told about, I've, I've told this before, but there was some men working at an iron smelter, a place where they melt iron ore and stuff, and they, they, they turn iron into a liquid, and then they can pour it out into molds to form the different shapes that they want the iron. And the story was that there was one of the workers there somehow fell into the furnace. And they say literally you could see the man get up, he started trying to run, but his flesh just began to melt right in front of their eyes and began to puddle up out of his shoes. Hell is going to be a horrible place. Hell is going to be a horrible, horrible place. And I don't want anybody to go to hell. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's going to be a lake of fire. It's going to be a lake that's going to be boiling with lost souls. Boiling. 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 You ever watch water boil in a pot? And then as it boils, the ingredients begin to surface and go back down. Surface and go back down. You'll see a carrot come up and it goes back down. You'll see a celery come up and it goes back down if you boil and make a soup. I had a vision one time. I was praying, I was interceding, I was weeping, I was crying. And I think for a moment it was like I just saw what hell, I saw hell. And I saw faces come jumping up out of the fire and go back down. Faces. And the faces were people that I knew and people that I loved. And as I began to see that, I began to just cry and weep all the more. And for hours, I convulsed. My stomach cramped and convulsions travailing to save my loved ones, save my friends. Years ago, I don't know if they still do it, but people would go fishing illegally. And they would take an old telephone, crank telephone, and they put the wires down into the water, and they start cranking that telephone, and it would send electricity through the water. And the fish would just start coming, jumping, 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 trying to get out of that that water that was being electrified. It was shocking them. They would try. They just come jumping out of the water. And it's kind of like that. I saw hell. They were just people trying to get out. People trying to get out, but then the boiling just sucked them back in. Paul said, Woe is me if I preach not this gospel. He said, I am a debtor. I am in debt to the Jews, to the Gentiles, to the I am in debt. God save me. I cannot be quiet. Oh, now, Weeping before the Lord has an impact. I understand where I'm, I'm talking about what we need. We need to get in one accord. Where we need to get in the soul saving mode. It's got to be with us during the day. When you're vacuuming the floor, you've got to fuel for lost souls. You can find yourself during the day with tears coming down your cheeks and all you can say is, Oh God. Oh, God, save the souls. God, save this and save that. Psalms 126 and 6 says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I'm asking this church, I'm asking everybody at every level to make a concerted effort 
at least once a week to pray until you weep for a soul. Yes, sir. I'm not praying to say all of a sudden you see a tear and you stop. But I want you to make an effort, God. I'm going to pray until I feel it in my gut. Until I feel it down inside of me, God. At least once a week, I'm making, asking you to make an effort to pray one time a week, just like that. I, I don't exempt your other prayer. But on this one occasion, make up your mind. God, I'm going to touch heaven. I'm going to touch you this day and this hour. If it takes me one hour, two hours, I'm, I'm, I'm parking myself in this closet. I'm parking myself in this corner. I'm going to stay here, God, until I can feel the love for lost souls to the point where I will be weeping. Psalms 34, 18, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as of a contrite spirit. 51 and 7, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Isaiah 66, 8. Who hath heard such a thing and who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? In other words, he's saying these things do not happen without actions that precede them. And then he says, For as soon as Zion travailed, yes. she brought forth her children. Children are not born without labor and travailing. Yes, sir. Can the mama say amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Children are born by pain. Children are born by labor and travailing. And so it is. Lost souls don't just happen. They are born into a body. They are born into a church that, amen, has prepared itself and made itself ready and has paid the price and has done the travailing and the weeping. And then souls will be born into the kingdom. Let us be like Jacob who wrestled with the Lord, angel of the Lord. And he wrestled all night. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. God, I will not let you go until you allow me to be a weeper. Yes. God, I will not let you go until you make me a travailer in the yes. spirit. God, I will not be satisfied, oh God, until, until, until. Please, God, please, God. I beg of you, Jesus. Touch me. Touch me, Jesus. Let me, Lord, become a travailer. Let me weep, O oh God, before you and bear precious seeds. Rachel, motherless, childless, and she cried to God, said, God, I would rather be dead than not have a child. And she said, God, give me children or let me die. And God blessed her with a child. And you know what? She died. God give us such an attitude and such a concentration of mind, and such a concentration of purpose, the one accord. Amen. In Azusa revival that went around the world in the basement of that building. Yes, sir. There never ceased to be weeping and travailing night and day. Night and day. Night and day. I forget how I many, but we went on for years. Years. Years it went on. Amen. Jeremiah said, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears yes, sir. that I might weep night, day and night. For the slain daughters of my people. Yes, God. Are we getting the message? Can we concentrate? Can we move up a little higher? We need more. Brothers and sisters, we need more warriors to join in with those that we have. Yes, sir. 
I was going to have Sister Deborah come up and read something today, but I don't think it's... But you have a contract. The leaders in this church and all those in this church, you, you made a contract under Pastor Jonathan. She showed it to me today. That you would be involved in intercessory prayer. And that you would come early to church and you have designated the Sundays and you're supposed to be here an hour early and be praying and have and, and, and uniting together. I had a meeting this morning at 10 o'clock and there was four or five people there. The rest of you, I don't know where you were. But, amen. We got to change that. That's got to change. It's going to change. It's going to change. You want to. I know you want to. Yes, sir. I know you want to. Yes, sir. But you just need the challenge before you. Yes, sir. You just need to hear it coming from the head. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, crossroads, we're going to stand up. Yes. Crossroads is going to take the challenge. Yes, crossroads, we're going to grow. We're going to yes, get stronger and yes. stronger. We're going to expand our faith from prayer warriors and intercessors. I've been concerned the lack of conviction, but you know, everything's good, so there's no need for people to feel guilty because pretty much everybody is everybody's happy. happy. I'm happy. You're happy. Yes, sir. So there's not much conviction. But can we? But can we? But can we get convicted over our lack of concern and burden? For the lost soul. Yes, we can. We've had our season of fun. Now it's time to go to war again in the spirit. Do you remember when you first received the Holy Ghost? You were desperate. You cried out, God, please, God, give me the Holy Ghost. Forgive me, God. You did everything you had to get the Holy Ghost. I'm asking you. To go back to your first love. Go back to the beginning today. Let's revisit the beginning. Hallelujah. And let's seek God for lost souls as desperately and as strongly and as dedicatedly as we did when we first ourselves received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, that's what I've got to say today. But I'm going to do more than say. We're going to do something here. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to, Sister Deborah, you would just still want to come give that little speech that I asked you to give. No? Okay. I want to ask these people to come forward. I want to ask Brother Jojo. Why don't you come stand to my far left over here? Sister Dorothy, I want you to come and stand over by this column. Sister Donna, you can just come stand right where you are. Sister Virgie, won't you come stand just to my right here? Sister Faye Walkie, I want you to come and stand next to this. I'd like to stand over there in front of that clock. And Sister Deborah, just stand over here. I need one more person. That is willing to weep and cry and be a leader of weepers. I'd like to. Okay, brother, brother Work. Why don't you get over, way over there, okay, brother? There's the sunshine over there. Y'all have heard me. I've been talking about the number 49 for ever since I came here. Haven't you? 49. 49 is a number God gave me way back. And I've been praying and I've been waiting. I've been praying. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the right day and the right hour and the right moment. 
Now what I'm fixing to do, it doesn't, it, it doesn't cross lines with any other department or prayer groups or anything. We're not changing. Everything's staying the same as far as your position and your, your allegiances to your home groups and all that. But what I am doing here, I am creating a new band of prayer warriors. And I am looking for six more people to join each of these groups, persons. But you just can't come up here. You've got to, you have to make a commitment. I will commit to pray once a week for in order to weep for lost souls. Uh, I mean, don't pray once a week. No, I'm just saying. But in your prayer, once a week, you will you will put a special effort in praying. Say, I am going to stay on my knees or whatever until my heart breaks for lost souls. Now, I'm asking for volunteers today. I believe we're here. We... Come and join one of these persons. Get with one of these persons. We want six at each one. We have the personnel here to do this. If you already do these things, well, you should join the group too. Just to be in concert and harmony with what the church is doing. Do you understand what we're doing here? Here at the crossroads, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just telling you clearly the way things are. We're all people. We're all saints of God. We all pray. We all do good things. But we're asking for something a little bit above and beyond. And all these people that I put in charge, or I say charge, I put them in leadership of these groups. I have watched their lives, and I have seen they all know how to weep before God and plead God for lost souls. I see them every night. Some of them, they're just about every night of the week, they're here weeping and crying. Some of you do, I don't get to see you. But I want you on this in this ministry. Because we need to broaden this base of this intercessory power. We need to broaden this base. And I want to obtain the number of 49 people. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. Carmesita, are you with the, 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 the six? Sister Vera, will you join this group? You understand what we're saying? Yes. That's the law of death. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Let's go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This group's fixed. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got one, two, many in this group. Okay. What, how, what we got over here? One, two, three, four.
let me make this understood. This doesn't change anything. If you're an overseer or a group leader, if you have your own prayer groups and your groups and all that, that's not changing that. This is something beyond everything. This is above and beyond all of that. There's no reason for anybody to get their feelings hurt. You are still who you are. Nothing changes. But what we're trying to do, we're trying to take the power yeah. among us. Hallelujah. And we're trying to organize it and get it all together in one mind and one accord. Hallelujah. To make a difference. Now what I need each of you group leaders or prayer warriors to do, I need you to get the telephone numbers of all the people in your group. Amen. And I want y'all to keep regular touch. Encourage one another. Amen. And if y'all can get together, together to pray together, that's better. But some of you, I know you can't, but where you are, you can where you are. Amen. All right? Let's all stand together. It's still early. We don't get out most of the time in the quarter of two. Father, I pray God that a spirit of intercession.